Guten Tag. In the previous video, we explored canonical forms of Boolean equations, which included two types, sum of products, SOP, and product of sums, POS. In this video, we'll show how those canonical forms can be simplified into what are called standard forms. The process to get there is a bit abstract, but ultimately makes for shorter equations and simpler circuits. A key term to define the difference between these forms is domain. Domain is the set of input variables. For example, in the equation s equals a b prime or a prime b, the domain consists of two input variables, a and b. In a canonical form, every domain variable must be present in each term, that is, in every min term for a CSOP form, or in every max term for a CPOS form. Standard forms, however, do not work under this constraint. They can have any number of literals within their product or sum terms, even down to a single literal. The rule does remain that every term must be either a product or some term. This means no combining of the AND and OR operations within a single term, and no applying a complement across multiple variables. If you see or hear the phrase SOP form, it implies the standard sum of products form. If the canonical form is needed, that should be specified with a C or the full word canonical. The same idea holds for POS form. These examples should make our verbal definitions clearer. This first equation is in standard SOP form. The domain holds three variables, x, y, and z. However, this first product term includes only two of those, x and z. Similarly, the second product term is missing a z. However, each individual term is a product term, and those product terms are summed together, which makes this a standard sum of products form. This CSOP equation does include every domain variable in each product term, which allows us to call it canonical. There are an unlimited number of ways to write non-standard equations. Here are just two examples. This first example fails to be standard because the first term, xz quantity prime, is not a true product term. The complement cannot be applied across multiple variables. This final example fails in its second term, or is it third term? x or y quantity ended with z is neither a product nor a sum term, so this whole equation is in a non-standard form. Now, these are still fine and usable equations, but they are simply not in standard forms, which may make it more difficult communicating ideas or building simple circuits. It turns out that these two equations in the middle are logically identical. You would get the same truth table from them. You can prove this by applying Boolean algebra rules to simplify the canonical equation into the standard equation, as demonstrated here. Which form is better? It depends. On our final slide, we'll discuss the pros and cons of using these two forms. Regardless, it is valuable to be able to convert between the two. Moving from canonical to standard forms involves simplifying with some basic Boolean algebra rules, as just shown. Moving the other direction is a bit trickier and will be the focus of these next slides. First, let's expand from standard to canonical sum of products form. The procedure is outlined here with an example to follow. 1. Identify a product term that is missing a variable from the equation's domain. 2. Include that missing variable by multiplying the product term by the missing variable ORed with its complement within parentheses. Repeat steps 1 and 2 for all missing variables. Then, expand the equation through the distributive law. Finally, if there are any duplicate product terms, eliminate one of them. Note that we are not violating any of the Boolean algebra rules in this procedure. 
generally we are merely applying a couple of rules in the opposite direction that we normally do, expansion rather than simplification. In this example we are given r equals x prime z prime or y. This is in standard POS form. Yes, that lonely y counts as its own product term. The domain consists of three variables, x, y, and z. This first product term is missing a y, so we include that y by multiplying the original term by y or y prime. The second product term is missing both x and y. To include those, we multiply this term by x or x prime, and also z or z prime. This is akin to multiplying a numeric algebraic expression by 1. At this point, we have already completed step 3. So, next we distribute to remove the parentheses and obtain a large number of min terms. This x prime z prime is anded with a y, and also with a y prime, and those results are ORed together. In a similar but longer fashion, this y gets distributed across four product terms. I've also taken the step of rearranging the variables in alphabetical order. As a final step, we scan through the min terms to see if there are any duplicates. The only one is this x prime y z prime term. Eliminate one, but not both, of them, and now we obtain the final result. So now we can see both the original standard SOP equation and its equivalent canonical SOP representation. We can do a similar thing with the product of sum form. Step one is identical. Identify any terms that are missing a domain variable. Step two is to include that missing variable by adding it anded with its complement to the sum term. Then repeat those steps for all missing variables. Next, and this is the strangest step for most people, separate the new term by applying rule 12 in reverse. Typically we apply rule 12 from left to right, but in this procedure we will take an expression like a or b c and convert it to a or b anded with a or c. Lastly, as we saw before, eliminate any duplicate terms that remain. Let's look at the standard POS example of s equals x prime or z anded with y or z. We first note that the domain is three variables, x, y, and z. The first sum term is missing a y, so we add y and y prime into the sum term. Similarly, the second sum term is missing an x, so x and x prime gets added into it. This is akin to adding zero to a numeric algebraic expression. I place these new additions where I did just to maintain alphabetic order. Next we separate the new sum terms. By rule 12 this first term will split into two, one with y and one with y prime. Similarly the second term will split into two, one with x and one with x prime. Finally, we see four max terms all being anded together, and we scan through for any duplicates. x prime or y or z appears twice, so we eliminate one of them, which leaves us with the final canonical POS representation. These steps can certainly feel strange at first, but they follow Boolean algebra rules, and these are the only two procedures for expanding, because SOP and POS are the two primary forms. So, a little practice will get you comfortable with these conversions. But the truly important things to learn are, one, being able to recognize the standard and canonical SOP and POS forms, and two, knowing where each form is useful. One advantage of canonical forms is that they allow us to read equations directly from truth tables. Remember the previous video? We were able to look at this truth table, identify the output ones, and write this equation. Also, canonical forms allow us to easily convert between SOP and POS equations. Given the CSOP equation, we can directly build this truth table. It tells us the ones. 
And then those zeros from the table can take us straight to the CPOS equation. However, this exhaustive listing of all conditions often makes the canonical equations cumbersome. The standard SOP equation that is identical to both of these lengthy equations is a nifty Q equals X prime Y prime or X prime Z prime. That is much shorter to write, obviously. And that leads to the big practical advantage of making circuits cheaper and simpler to wire. Because of this, we will be working with standard equations more often. But that doesn't mean canonical equations are going away. We rely on them to begin a number of designs and often convert them into standard form. Even more, we sometimes must deal with non-standard forms. So get comfortable with those Boolean algebra rules.